We are so excited to have a great welcome for the President of the United States and a great welcome here at the KCATA. Let me start by giving a good shout out to my friend Robbie Mackinnon and all those here at the KCATA who do wonderful work. Now, sometimes life comes full circle. About 30 years ago, there was a Kansas City woman whose family moved a lot, but lived primarily on Kansas City's east side. She had three kids within five years of age and got them around and herself around on the bus riding to work each and every day. The waits could be long on a cold day. The quarters it cost to ride at the time could add up to taking food off of that kid's table. But she kept riding to build opportunities for herself and her family. That woman was my mother. That family was my family. But that story is just one story of hardworking American families in Kansas City, in the suburbs, in the country, and in every state. Infrastructure, you see, isn't about objects, it's about people. The, thank you. The Kansas City and looking to find the job that helps them reach the middle class. The Missourian who is looking for access to the skills they need to be competitive in the next generation. And the president's bill, supported by my congressman and forever my mayor, supported by a congresswoman who knows the story of a hardworking mom who always believed in her, even when others may not, and supported by a bipartisan consensus of Americans across the country, will launch more success stories, build more good paying union jobs. and will help us build that better life for all Americans, no matter where they're from or where they start. I'm proud to stand here today with my congresspersons. We're proud to stand here with the president. And I'll note here in Kansas City, I'm honored mostly today to talk about a city that is leading on zero fare and reduced emissions public transportation. In early 2020, Kansas City became the first major American city to implement a permanent zero fare transit initiative, making all public transit fare free and putting thousands of dollars, $2,000 per person, back into the pockets of hardworking men and women in Kansas City. And during the pandemic, we never gave up on our public transit system. And importantly, we never gave up on the riders, like my mother those years before, like the essential workers who are going to work each day. And this is the type of transformative work that we're talking about when we say infrastructure. It's about equity, it's about jobs, it's about connectivity, it's about opportunities. America's mayors, America's congresspeople, and so many others are committed to ensuring these dollars translate into action, lifting up communities where government commitment will now and finally match the hope and opportunity in all people's hearts. Kansas City, the country's eyes are on us. And we will continue to showcase what it means to be a city committed to equitable service delivery and committed to working for all folks in all neighborhoods. Now, I know the president has an appointment at some point with Kansas City Barbecue, so I'll keep us moving along. I have to recognize just a few other folks. Every sign today was printed in-house in Kansas City, Missouri, with good union labor of Local 500. And I'd like to thank everybody in Public Works, KCATA, Fire Department, the Police Department, every worker in Kansas City. Let's give them a round of applause as well. So we'll look forward to a continuing partnership with the president. We'll look forward to a continuing partnership as we implement these important dollars. And importantly, as we were to get Build Back Better across the finish line. Good afternoon, I'm S.Q. Jackson, a proud member of ATU 1287 here in Kansas City. I'm so, I'm so honored to stand here on behalf of more than 600 members of our local and international President John Costa to introduce President Joe Biden, a man who is delivering on his promise to get things done in Washington. The president did exactly what he said he would do. He reached across the aisle, worked with the other side, and got a deal done. And this is going to be a big deal, especially here in Kansas City. Our infrastructure is crumbling, and it's 
not just our roads and bridges, it's about public transit. I've been a transit operator here for six years, but the long hours became too much. I have three children aged five, six, and 12 and needed to be home more. So I recently transferred to maintenance department where I could work eight hours, go home for baseball games, basketball games, and just be a dad. We have two electric buses here at the KCATA. And with the infrastructure bill, I'm sure we'll be getting many more. Soon our entire fleet will be electric. And I want to ensure that I have the skill set to fix and maintain these vehicles. Thankfully, thanks to the Biden team, the bill sets aside $500 million for training. The transit systems must use this money for workforce development for people like me. It's a really big deal. But that's what you'd expect from the most pro-labor, pro-transit president in American history. Since January, he's brought hope, compassion, and leadership to the White House. He bought America back just in time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the United States and former school bus driver, Joe Biden. I tell you what, I don't know where that phrase, it's a big deal, came from. <laughs> Being here this week reminds me of another great American giant, or rather, an American monarch, Buck O'Neill, the Kansas City monarch. A great ball player, the first black coach in the majors, one of the game's greatest ambassadors, and finally, Finally, a Hall of Famer. I also want to acknowledge Mayor Quentin Lucas. Mayor Q, you've done an amazing job, both in terms of economic justice as well as economic progress. The infrastructure law I signed Thanksgiving would not be possible, and this is not hyperbole, without the leaders here today. Congressman Manuel Cleaver was a great mayor, a significant leader in the House. Before he's both those things, he was a pastor. And he saw, he saw a highway cut through the neighborhood many of his congregants call home. So he knows that we need to build our infrastructure the right way, not just build it, but build it the right way. He also is a big reason Kansas City is adding electric buses to his fleet. Zero fare, zero emissions. Congressman, great idea. Great idea. And Congresswoman Sharice Davis, there is no stronger advocate for infrastructure investment in the United States Congress that I've ever met, anyway. And as vice chair of the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee, your, your leadership was key in getting this passed. So I want to thank you. There you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I also want to thank somebody else, Roy Blunt. He couldn't be here today, but he was an important part of the bipartisan effort to get the infrastructure passed. We're in a situation where we've known that our infrastructure had problems for a long, long time. I don't think I could take one more phrase that's going to be infrastructure weak. But guess what? It's going to be infrastructure decade now, man. No more talking. Action. And there's no reason why it should be two hours faster to drive from Kansas City to St. Louis than take a train. No reason. All the data shows that if you get from point A to point B at a faster rate by rail than by automobile, you'll take the rail. And guess what that does? First of all, it's safer. But secondly, it's going to save over time millions of barrels of oil, millions of barrels of oil, because it's electric. And infrastructure law means more projects like the extension of the Kansas City streetcar. 
so you can connect Union Station with KM, excuse me, UMKC and everything in between. It means students can easily get to internships and jobs in the downtown core. It means families can get to restaurants, stores, the plaza, to read the riverfront, to catch the Kansas City Current game at the new stadium, the first stadium, by the way, I might specifically point out, specifically built for women's soccer. <laughs> the law invests $42 billion to modernize our ports and airports in America. Like the new terminal you're building in Kansas City International, or improvements to the island port in the Missouri River, helping get agricultural products from the Midwest to the rest of the nation. And this bill has $16 billion in it to improve ports like yours. These investments make it easier, easier for companies to get their goods to market, reducing supply chain bottlenecks, lowering costs for families. Here in Kansas City, the possibilities are unlimited. You've got the fastest growing port in the Midwest, here in the heart of the heartland for freight rail, for transforming your airport. You're building a national hub. We never break. We never stop. We Americans always rebuild. And we will rebuild this country. And this law builds back our bridges, our water systems, our power lines, electric grids, better, stronger, and more resistant to the negative effects of climate change. One of the reasons I feel so firmly in the proposals is because I know what this country can be. We've always been a nation of possibilities. We didn't become this nation by thinking small. We always thought big. Throughout our history, we've emerged from crisis by investing in ourselves, in our people. During the Civil War, be before it was over, Lincoln started to build the Transcontinental Railroad. It was built at the end of and during the Civil War. During the Cold War, <coughs> Eisenhower built the interstate highway system, transforming the way Americans lived. And now we're at work beginning and building an economy in the 21st century to build a better America. I truly believe, and I promise you this, I believe that 50 years from now, when historians look back on this moment, they're going to say this was the moment that America won the competition for the 21st century. And we're not going to lose anymore. I promise you, the time of losing is over. It's over, 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 over. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.